Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Mick, joined with Danny, and we are going to draw groups for the summer 2021 Star Wars LCG tournament here. Uh, but first, uh, tell us a bit about card pool. What what are we yeah. looking at this season? So, um, you know, I didn't win the tournament. I think we should start with that. Ivan won. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. right? <laughs> so, so uh, you, you just came up with the affiliation card thing. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, after after he won, we talked a little bit about what we're going on the card pool to be. And Ivan said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, so he basically pawned off the duties. So it was kind of like the best of both worlds. Right? So he gets to win and doesn't have to do any of the work. And then I get to introduce my affiliation card that I wanted. So the only thing that Ivan cared about is he said, I want Ewoks to be good and in the pool. That was it. Right? Like, you give me Ewoks. Other than that, I don't really care. Yeah. yeah. So um, the thing that I want for the pool was I wanted to make a special affiliation card that I've been pitching to different members of the community for a while. And I kind of just want to see what it looks like in a fairly competitive environment. And so the the affiliation card, what it does is it gives you resources equal to the Death Star dial, up to three. So like turn one, you'll have guaranteed one resource from your affiliation. But then once you get to turn three and onward, you're always getting three. So you have the three from your affiliation, plus at least three from your objectives. And then the downside of it is all of your other resources, they're just potatoed. Like, like all of your enhancement unit resources, they don't do anything. And then I put an additional nerf on it to hurt specifically Yoda and Spark. Because this is much more of a, um, what's it called, light side benefit than dark side benefit. Um, and then for the card pool itself, just set all cards legal. So everything that is like FFG legal, so everything that was legal at Final Worlds, is legal here, plus the six affiliation cards, I guess. Okay, uh, yeah. So all the new affiliation cards, uh, the replacement cards are not in. Yeah. They don't have to worry about that. And during the group round, people can play basically whatever they want. And uh, this was another thing that Ivan talked to me about is um, in the, once we advance to elimination rounds, players will have to field four decks. Yeah. that can't overlap in any way so like you can't split the yodas run one may the force here one may the force there if you have a may the force in one deck you cannot have a may the force in the other deck and then i think that also extends for affiliations as well yeah i think i think the affiliation one's a pretty easy one to get around though because um it just means like i want refreshing can't... spiders in all my decks <laughs> yeah yeah so like if you want to run the refresh affiliation on dark side you can run the scum version and the navy version. You can't run, you can't just run like two versions of Force Hunters where one has dual and one has Bane. And then right. you, like, like you can't basically split the deck in half and then run that. Like you're gonna have to actually come up with two pretty different decks. Similarly, if you wanna run like the new affiliation, you call it the Coaxium. Or how do you, how do you, yeah, uh, the Coaxium from the solo movie. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you, if you run the Coaxium, you have to, at the very least, change up the main contents of the deck enough that they would be different, you know? Okay. So I, I, think, I think it'd be fine. Like, like, people are gonna... There's a lot of cards to choose from in the game, and, like, a lot of cards are gonna become more playable, so we, we're gonna take, like, an already diverse game and just add even more to it. Like, if people can't come up with four decks, I don't know what to tell them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I already had at least four decks, pr probably per side. So like eight yeah. decks, <laughs> 18. Um, do you want to take that dive into what 2018 looked like back then and try to figure out what where Coaxium fit in? Uh, I, I think we should probably put the groups out first. Okay, let's we'll see. Before we, we get to that, because I feel like once we start talking about actual decks... It, it, it's just going to spiral into like, you know, <laughs> let's get on tangents. Okay, here we go. Um, so we had 18 people sign up. Uh, so that's going to make for what are we doing this time? We're doing three groups of six. And the top two will be guaranteed to advance. So that'll that'll get us to six people in the cut. 
and uh, then they'll be. Is your is your camera supposed to be pointing at your playmat right now? Yes. Is that okay. happening here? Right now, it just looks like your camera's off. Oh. Do, do, do. Are we good now? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me get. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a 18 players cut to top eight, top two in each group advance. And then for players seven and eight, we will look at uh, win percentages during the group round. And if that's a tie, we'll look at game points. Can make a side note that loop you have there is going to see a lot of play with the new affiliation. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. The amount hoping. of uh, Luke he's, home decks he's, that I was able to come up with. Like, like this Luke has problems with resources because he like he has a resource card that's not a resource card, but yeah. with the Coaxium Jedi, like that looks pretty good. It's like Luke Owen plus gas seems absurdly powerful. Like, yeah, because like normally if you play that combo, you have to shove in resources that may not be entirely synergistic. Now you can just go ham. Yeah, you can. OK. Let's, oh, I didn't I grab the green group one. All right, uh, so I've shuffled these up. Uh, I'll present for a cut. We'll split them into three groups face down, and then we'll just go through one group at a time here. So let's cut the top seven cards. Seven. Bump. OK. All right. Bump, 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 bump. OK, didn't come out exactly there. All right, here we go. Blue group. We'll do blue group first here. We got, oh, it's me. It's me. <laughs> I'm in it. And Han Sholasi. The name was taken. Get to play Carlos again. Elf guys. Jolly Roger. And Jimmy C, 1972. Um, I think Carlos is one of the players that I think people should be the most afraid of. Actually, honestly, all of the European players. Because like when I was looking at the uh, Euros and the top 16 for Worlds and just comparing like which decks do I think would have the mm -hmm. best use of the new affiliation, the European players were playing way more fast and loose with resources than the Americans. So it's just like you're just basically giving these guys a steroid pump by allowing to, to them, allow them to, to, uh, to play the decks that they've always wanted to play. Well, not just wanted to play, the decks that they just do play. <laughs> 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 That's the thing. Like there were, there was like one deck that I saw that was, I think, if like Doi Four was the only real resource production, and the rest of it were just babies. So that deck just says, okay, I get more money now, and otherwise I can stay the same. Get more money, I can still discard cards, so it's great. Yeah, I think I've played. I don't think I've played Elf Guys. Elf Guys are Han Sholasi. I played Jolly Roger and Jimmy and Carlos a bunch. Jolly Roger comes up with some strange decks, strange yeah. stuff. Yeah, the, the the weirder you are as a deck builder, I think the more you're going to get rewarded in this format. Yeah, OK, that's blue group. Put this on the side here, make sure I remember it. OK. Moving on to pink group. Yoda man. Sir Ivan Ho. Kira mode. So you're you're in this one. Who do we got else with you? Rio. Oh, it's Luke on Luke here. You know, I don't know if I've ever played this Luke on this map. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Donovan and Kyler. Uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah. This, this is a very not fun group for me. Groups. 
Yeah, <laughs> I think all the groups are going to be brutal to get through. <laughs> Just got to make sure that your 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 win percentage is high enough to squeak it out as that player seven, player eight. Ooh. I mean, Brainiac and Skyhopper are restricted, right? Uh, the whatever the latest restricted list was still applies. Okay. Because that, that deck would be pretty disgusting if you gave it extra cash. Were, were they restricted at the end? I don't remember. I think so. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I know but, that, that Leia Pyre was restricted because somebody had too much fun with it. Yeah, everyone had too much fun. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yellow group, I guess, is everybody else. Kodamron, Dav Flamrock, uh, Stan. I forgot to put a thing with him. Markopolis, Darren, and Haxon. So we got Colby and yours. Well, I guess Tyler doesn't count anymore, right? We claim him. He's Minnesota now. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his roots, but we where's claim. Stan from again? Uh, Stan's Stan's New York. Yeah, Stan, Stan's uh, Jimmy's colleague. So you have three okay. and a half. But we just we should just trade them Brainiac. We'll take someone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got some brutal groups here. Fireworks should fly. Okay. Let's see here. Could you um, could you screen share the uh, the picture I sent where I just highlight the uh, the decks that I think have like a reasonable oh. shot? And no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm thinking like when it posts, you can just put like uh, I, I asked Yoda man if he could send me the top sixteen list for worlds. I was just fishing to see if he maybe had them, and he had them in like five seconds. Like, like, and like Bill just sent like this entire PDF with top sixteen for mm -hmm. like final worlds, and it also had it's my files. I got it all. Yeah, <laughs> just and it was just like already set up and ready to go. I was like, okay, well that was great. Um, but yeah, um, what I did a little bit before we started here was I wanted I just kind of went through the list and figured, okay, who would reasonably consider playing? The new affiliation right because like the we've been playing enough with these smaller card pools that it it can sometimes be hard to recalibrate how strong something is right and um we're about to enter the full card pool where force hunters are alive and well and, and that was something that i think was kind of shocking was just how many people ran force hunters at both euros and worlds like like in my head it was a lot but then you actually see it on paper you're like this is an insane amount of people it's like just everyone and their mother decided Force Hunters was the path. You know? Like, for for Worlds, I count seven pure Force Hunters and then two bootleg Force Hunters out of the top 16. Mm, where did you put me in that one? I put you under Refresh No Duel. Okay, so not you really Force Hunter? Yeah, you, you two are the bootleg force hunters. I'm a bootleg force hunter. Okay. Well, I put I actually I highlighted both of you two as possibly using the affiliation because you're not running dual. So I think it becomes a discussion. I don't know if you actually do it, but like I think it's something that wouldn't be crazy if you thought about it. You know. Wait, is dual mandatory in the force hunter? I, I thought force hunters was just like. Well, force yeah. Force I mean, I think force bank. hunters in general is. You run some amount of Bane plus Sith stuff, right? In particular, Palp, the uh, the newer Palp. Yeah. That, that that in general, I think, is what people think of with Force Hunters. But what makes Force Hunters extra disgusting is the fact that they have refreshing spiders, right? The refresh affiliation gives you the spiders, plus also they refresh the Bane shuds. Right. Um, it helps with the Bane them. shuds, just and Bane himself. The spiders are really gross and yeah that, that 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 deck can take four objectives by turn by turn three yeah 
So my thinking was the decks that are Force Hunters with Duel, almost none of them consider it, I don't think. Like, I, I listed one deck in there that I thought maybe Andy's deck, I thought possibly could do it. And then um, you and Tom, that that one's also like a maybe, just because your deck is light enough on resources and you don't have the refreshing spiders. Yeah, it could potentially like tilt itself one way. Well, we, we can actually look at it. So like, do you, do you remember the list off the top of your head? Uh, I got it over here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my list button. was re the the refresh, promise of power, double core emperor, one Saris, one D lots, one Vader's army, one Tat Crash, Zeka, Guri, uh, Bane, and BK. So big toolbox. So yeah, I, I think this is because I was counting it up, and it's like you have. D-Lot, Ceres, Web. Then those are your one-for-ones. And then outside of that, it's like a bunch of either two-for-ones or no money on pots. Oh, true. Yeah. So does... Yeah, the money work. It's like, does like Ceres get swapped out for, we'll say like some scum pod or something that doesn't have a resource but still has a removal spell? Like, could Ceres just be Dengar? And then the deck just churns to the money affiliation and then the deck's roughly the same, but then has this better resource base. That that is more or less like 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 if I highlighted a deck, I felt like either as is or with very minimal changes could actually consider it. Yeah. 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 My my deck could consider it, but I think you're right that anything with the spiders would not even <laughs> just no, like it's not it's not much of a discussion if you if you have the spiders on the table. Um and, and it's just like, I was really surprised just looking at looking back to the list at how many dark side decks used alternate affiliations versus light side decks. In my head, it was about even, and it's not even close. Like dark side uses it way more. Like almost every single dark side deck here is either on a refresh affiliation or on a seven card reserve. I thought that the light side decks were. I thought they were also doing similar stuff. Some of them were. Um, it, it's a lot less than you'd think. I know jo uh, Josh was on, like, Tricolor. You yeah, know, so I, that, that was part of it. We, we had enough people doing Tricolor. So, you know, you think about the Tricolor decks can't run a special affiliation. Neither can really any of the Ewok decks because they run too many Jedi pods. Um, so it was like you had a couple seven-card reserve, like, vehicle decks. Um, on light side, and then um, some of the Jedi Falcon decks. Yeah, Jedi the, Falcon likes that two re, two money objective. Yeah, they they could go either the refresh or the two money. Although I don't think they're particularly committed to it. You know, like it, it, not in the way that the dark sides decks have really committed to having these alternate affiliations. So it, it's just actually tougher, I think, on dark side to fit it into the pre-established decks because they already have something good that you'd have to give up in order to get it in there. Whereas, like, I was able to highlight a lot more light side decks where I was like, okay, this deck could use it, this deck could use it, and this one could use it here too. But I think the dark side could, like, start exploring in different yeah. directions now. And I, and I do think dark side has more ability than light side to explore just because it doesn't have the nerf, which... Um, the text will be on there, but the nerf that the card has is that units cannot enter play from your deck if you're playing the card. Right, so you can't do... You can play Yoda, but you can't play Yoda, you seek Yoda. Yeah, so the, the main cards that get affected... Spark. Spark, Yoda, you seek Yoda, right? There, there, there are some unfortunate sacrifices that have to get made in order for this to work. So MoMA, you seek MoMA is out, as is DJ3PO. Um... What's it called? The vehicle spark. Yeah. That one's out. But I mean, to be clear, like people can still play these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just not if you want to play the, the resource acceleration. But that I, I felt like that was a pretty fair price to pay because if not, I think people just run it way too much with Yoda and um, Spark. 
in a way that becomes unfun. Right, yeah, now it's a choice to make. Yeah. And on Darkseid, you always have the choice of, do I play this or do I just play Force Hunters? Because the answer for the majority... Uh, the, the mixed affiliation objectives are really good. Yeah. And I think they're just better on Darkseid anyways. Like, the refresh affiliation matters a lot more if you're a dark side player than if you're a light side player because if you're a dark side player you always have to commit someone on your first turn and presumably other turns as well mm -hmm. and who you commit might not necessarily be elite yeah not getting locked down is important and then on light side you sometimes commit sometimes don't it doesn't really matter as much like getting locked down on light side is not as punishing as getting locked down on dark side so it, it just like it's a thing where you will commit a little more as dark side to get that refresh in a way that on light side you get it if it's there but otherwise you don't care i suppose everybody is giving up like the the force money if if they want to play galaxium like yeah uh, you, you you can't uh rely on you know your deneva refueling station or your your um dark temple yeah or, Get you up to eight resources. Yeah, I think the uh, on dark side, some of the decks that I highlighted is there were some seven card reserve decks that were running repair and refurbish. And what was pretty clear about the list is that the reason they were running seven card reserve wasn't because they wanted the extra card, but it was because they needed to play ten other pods that didn't have enough money, so they go to the twelve to get the resources. So they shove in like a repair and refurbish and then one other resource pod and then the numbers kind of shake out to what you need it to be so i think those decks have a reasonable shot at actually switching affiliation cards you cut the repair and refurbish you cut some other resource pod and then you just play your deck as is right so like um mission palp was a good example of a deck that saw that sort of structure where you're like okay i need to play mission palp i need to play rav and i need to play like avenger or something and those don't have money so now yeah, I'm, I'm I think like really scrapping for resources. Help so. actually become a lot more attractive with the coaxium affiliation. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a direction that I want to explore in. Yeah, uh, my mission palp deck, it's, it's the, the one that I built once we knew that this was going to be a format was two mission palp, two rav. I think it was two of um, Yularen. Mm. The last two you can kind of go a, a couple different directions, but I wanted to have like core Tarkin to be able to have that super laser and I wanted Bach. <laughs> but the thing is, if you want, if you want Bach and Pal, yeah. Yeah, that's six non resource pods. So even though Tarkin and Yularen have resources, it's just not enough. So that that's where like with this affiliation, that deck becomes a little bit more viable. It still has it has a lot of the problems it always has, which is that you can always get run over. But now you're not sacrificing some of your gas just to like shore up the resource front. See, I want to play that deck, but in a different direction, where it's mission palp and uh, rav, and then um, six allies of necessity with Afra. And Mio and the Corruptor. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I mean, that'd be fun. Like, we'd actually be able to see it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I need to make Mio work somehow. Yeah, I think um, a deck that also becomes more interesting is Ewoks. So, right now, Ewoks are more or less solved. It's you play eight Ewok pods, take your pick which ones you want, and then two smart. And I think when you put this affiliation on the table, you actually have a real option of either playing just 10 Ewok pods or eight Ewok pods plus Yoda. Because like Yoda didn't really make a ton of sense for that deck just because what Yoda gives you is he gives you stability, right? He gives you force holding, he gives you resource, and he gives you edge. But Ewoks, because they don't have resources, it putting Yoda is not going to give you enough stability. Like you get the force hunt, you get like the force holding, but the money thing is still going to rear its head at some point. 
and enough that where you're like, it's not worth it, just play Spark for more explosive uh, turns. Now you can get the money you want and you can have a more stable plan where you're just like, the Ewoks are coming in. Yeah, but the Ewoks are only coming in as fast as you can draw them and pay for them. Like the, the that 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 Ewok Spark deck, like at the end of turn one, you know, you, you have five units on the board already. It's just Yeah, yeah. The, I mean the the Spark part of it is something that I don't know if everyone would want to give up, right? And the answer might still be Spark, right? It might just be that Spark is the best play no matter what you do. I mean, we've but seen the answer because in the final Gen Con, like the dark side, the winner of it, you know, played four missions that's like, I'm just going to deal 66 damage to all Ewoks. I'm going to kill all non yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's just like board wipe every turn. <laughs> Which is pretty fun. It is, yeah. That That is, that, that deck blows stuff up. Yeah, like like the, uh, the 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 mind games there is interesting, but I I would like to see if somebody just tries to say, I'm gonna play the Ewoks without the spark, and, and just see how much how much uh it changes and if it if it even comes close or if spark's just the answer. Possibly. I mean, maybe target of opportunity is the answer. That deck's fun. Yeah, yeah. So if you look through the list, there's one list on here. Or the deck builder was just on crack. Let, let, let me pull it up here because I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to classify it. Um, I think it was bounce deck. So Kalisha Stark's deck from the the Euros. Um, that is definitely a deck that would take full advantage of the affiliation. Wait, which light side or dark side? So the fifth place Euros light side deck. So okay, so this is I May the Force Heroes and Legends, fle fleeing the Empire. Yeah, so Leia. Forward reconnaissance. Van Ors, Winter, and one against all odds. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that that deck's lovely. Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, so it has some money, right? Like, it, it has enough. You got the two Yodas, the two Winters, and the two Yeah, you, you got, yeah, and Jan Ors. It, it has plenty of money. Um, it's in an 11-pod deck, though, as opposed to 10. Against um, odds. I think this one would think about it, especially considering this one has four twists. So... Yeah, it's got a lot of twists. So, like... Having a dead like having a Dagobah training grounds in your hand isn't a dead card if you play the twist. So like having that little bit of extra card advantage is nice, and your money situation isn't. Dude, it could literally be any other card. <laughs> you just you just need a card. Yeah, exactly. Now, now the only downside is if this deck tried to run the affiliation, it loses access to Yoda. You see Yoda. That's it. That that's like the downside. So, is the stability and card advantage worth losing Yoda, you seek Yoda? I mean, I think only Kalisha knows the answer to that, because nobody else has ever played this deck. Maybe Josh at some point has played something similar to this, but that's... But um, I, think, I think, like, that's the type of deck that... But I think a lot of people can think about is gaining a solid resource base, a reliable resource base that will be at six resources, you know, at, by turn two or three. Um, is that worth giving up Yoda, you seek Yoda? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think it is. I, I think it is for some more than others. So um, the decks that I think on light side would give would give up Yoda, you seek Yoda are the decks that already yeah. give up Yoda, you seek Yoda. <laughs> So, so for example, uh, the Kraken deck that I run um, always plays Yoda off color. So it just accepts that there's a lot of games where you're just not going to have Yoda you seek Yoda, and it doesn't matter because like that's not what it's in there for. So if that deck loses complete access to it, but then gets to massively upgrade its resources, because like the the deck as is, like the one I ended up running for Worlds, 
was two Yoda, two Falcon, two Kraken. Those are the only resources. Then you have two Visago and two Undercover Brother. So you look at those and it's like, Yoda's becomes a dead card. Kraken's resource is not a full on dead card because you can still use it to seed a Falcon, right? Like you can play it, seed a Falcon and then rescue mission. It's so like there are times where it still has some utility. And I mean, it being a two full on resource isn't great anyways. And then the Falcon resource still has two dots. So the deck doesn't lose a whole lot, but massively upgrades resources. And then the, the Yoda, you see Yoda being lost, it's kind of whatever. I think another example of that would be um, the, the capital ship deck that splashes Yoda off color. So the ones where it's like eight rebel, two Yoda with rebel affiliation. Yeah, they, they just want the five dots and the C's. Yeah. They, they, want, they want the dots, they want the nudge, they want the objective, and they want the resource. So for them, they kind of get all the same benefits but their resource base is pretty clunky as is. Because, like, you only have... You have the Doi 4 resource, the Yoda resource, and the Home 1 resource. That's it. In a deck that has a lot of gigantic bodies. Yeah, so... If you go Coaxium, you're, you're sort of saying, you know, I, I'll be able to reliably have six resources, and if I hit Doi 4, we're, we're just going crazy. <laughs> you know? Is I think I think that deck would really like it as well. When when you're not, it's like when the sacrifice isn't that big, you know. That that's when I think it makes sense. If if your deck is consistently relying on playing Yoda, you see Yoda, then I think you don't take it, right? But if your deck already doesn't care that much about that card, like if that card's viewed as more of a bonus and a necessity, and your deck's kind of iffy on resources, then you take it. Okay. Well, oh, exciting thoughts here. Um, so I'll get the groups posted for all of us. Should be some fireworks. Uh, players will have, um, let's see, there's groups of six. So there's going to be five matches. So we're going six uh, weeks for all of that. So this will take us to late August for the group round here. So make sure to report your games. Keep track of your game points. Uh, they will likely matter here as we're trying to figure out who's going to sneak in on the player seven, player eight spot. OK, I look forward to seeing uh, playing games with people and uh, hearing some stories. Catch you later. Catch you later.